Hi there, this is Tim Werner from CBT Nuggets. Welcome to this CBT Nuggets micro nugget entitled Windows Server 2012 Installation Options. You know, it seems like only yesterday, well, maybe not yesterday, but not too long ago, that I remember installing Windows NT Server 4.0. And in so doing, you needed three 1.4 megabyte floppy disks to boot the computer and do the initial installation phase. This was a blue screen, character-based 16-bit interface no mouse, no network, any driver installation needed to be done with local media. After your initial reboot, then you get some kind of GUI shell and some mouse support. Bottom line was, installing the OS back in those days was very much a pain. <laughs> Microsoft has done great things, especially with the advent of the Windows pre-installation environment, also called Windows PE. In Windows Server 2008, and now with Windows Server 2012, we have a graph 64-bit shell throughout the entire installation process. We also, in Windows Server 2012, I don't want to minimize that that's what this micro nugget is about, shares the two installation modes that were given to us initially in Windows Server 2008, namely the server core installation that does not have a graphical shell, interestingly enough, and is meant to minimize the attack surface of a machine and improve its performance. And then there's server with a GUI. This does give you Windows Windows Explorer, the Microsoft Management Console interface, etc. So those options are still around in installing Windows Server 2012. One difference is that Server Core is the default option. Unless you override it, your Windows Server 2012 installation is going to give you Core. Now, in another micro nugget, I talk about dynamic interface switching, where we can actually go between Server Core and GUI back and forth which gives us great flexibility as systems admins. Basically, the workflow would be you install a server with the GUI option, perform initial config using your favorite tools, and then switch it to server core to improve the performance and security of the box. There's also an intermediate state introduced in Windows Server 2012 called the minimal server interface. And basically what you've got here is you do a GUI install, or you switch your interface to GUI, and then you can strip away some elements, but not all. You can remove the server graphical shell, but you still have access to your core graphical tools like Server Manager, MMC, and a subset of the control panel options. Thus, Microsoft has given us administrators, as I said earlier, much more flexibility in terms of how we want Windows to run. Now in the demo portion of this micro nugget, I'm going to show you how easy it is to install Windows Server 2012. Let's get to work. Well, I booted this machine using the Windows Server 2012 Release Candidate DVD, and I'm going to show you in this brief demo just how streamlined and straightforward this Windows setup process is. In the first screen, we select our language, time and currency, and keyboard formats. Click Next. And you see that the main installation screen is extremely simple. We can either install or launch the repair tools. Well, we're going to install. This starts the setup process, obviously. And while we're waiting, note that that we are in a fully 64-bit graphical environment, network drivers available, mouse drivers available, the whole shebang. I also mentioned that the server core is the default installation type. You see that right here. Let me stretch out my column. And if I were to just click next, I would get a server core installation. In this case, though, I'm going to override that and select server with a GUI. We'll click next. We need to agree to the license terms before we can proceed, so we'll do that. We're asked, is this an upgrade or a fresh installation? I wish the nomenclature here was a little bit clearer. Custom doesn't really cut the mustard here. We're asked where we want to install Windows. I'm going to choose my main system drive here. If we need to load a custom driver, if you have a SCSI RAID array, for instance, with a host bus adapter that needs a driver, you can hit that. Or we can go to Drive Options, delete the partition, restructure your disk partitions. I'm going to format my drive. Confirms that we're going to lose all data if we do that, which is fine. That format took just mere seconds to accomplish. We'll click Next. And that's really it. As you see, it tells us that the computer will restart several times. This might take a while. And the steps of the process are copying Windows files to a temp folder on our target partition, getting the file files ready for installation, installing features, installing updates, and finishing up. We also see at the bottom of the screen, there's just two steps, collecting information and installing Windows. Can't get much more streamlined than that. You might remember in Windows 98, Microsoft ran essentially advertisements in a banner on the screen while you installed
installed. I always found that mildly annoying and perhaps even a little offensive. I'm glad in Windows 2012 we have about as minimal a setup interface as you can get. After our reboot, we're taken through a orientation wizard here. First, we're asked to assign a password to the built-in administrator account, which I will do and then confirm by clicking Finish. This finalizes our settings and brings us to the login screen. We're asked to press Control alt delete to sign in. Upon doing so, I can put in my administrator password. The rest of the setup wizard runs, as you see in the upper left corner, and we're taken into the traditional Windows desktop by default, and moreover, the new revamped server manager tool runs. Please see my CBT Nuggets micro nugget on the server manager if you want more details about this utility. This default load behavior is different in Windows Server 2012 from Windows 8. In Windows 8, we go over to the start screen by default. Now I can move to the lower left corner of the screen in Windows Server 2012 and click my mouse to switch to the start screen if we want to. And then we can come back again to the traditional desktop by clicking the desktop tile. That's all there is to performing a default installation of Windows Server 2012. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.